It will help you, I promise. Help you explain salvation a little better. Hallelujah. I want to say um, thank you to Brother Tommy. Brother Tommy did an awesome job. I don't know how many of you noticed. All around this church, all around the family center, he spent hours and hours and hours pressure washing. Did an awesome, wonderful job. <laughs> Brother Jerry's down here working like a tyke, man. He's been working up in that baptismal area. You don't have any idea how tough it is to work up in that baptismal area. But he is working like a tyke. Been working for three days up there. Just finished. Finishing up some work in the foyer. We like to keep this building looking good. If you're going to do anything for God, you do your best. You're going to have a church that needs to look its best. If you don't have a lot of money, you do the best you can. Amen. So um, that's what we're doing this week, and I appreciate Jerry coming down from, not Picayune, Mississippi, <laughs> Philadelphia, that's right, that's right, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Apostle James in the 5th chapter, 13th verse, tells God's people, very, very familiar passage of scripture, but the Lord illuminated some things to me this week in this passage that I think you'll find interesting. James 5, 13, and is, he, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. In other words, do what you are. Do what you are. Do what's going on in your life. If you're afflicted, get to praying. If you're happy, get to singing. Amen? And he's sick among you. Let him call for the elders or the preachers, the ministers of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And it said in verse 16, confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. My subject this morning is prayer works. Prayer works. Lord, talk to our hearts today. Let us be in receiving mode, God. Lord, so much in your word, people did not hear what the Spirit was saying to the church, God. Lord, let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. There are many reasons people give themselves to effectual, fervent prayer. First, it's because they believe God is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. People pray because they desire spiritual relationship with God. They know He is an almighty God, that He can do all things. And they desire to know Him in a more excellent way, and so they pray, and they seek to draw nearer. They seek to, they seek to get to the place where it's a near relationship with Him. People pray because they're thankful. They've seen the effects of God's works. Many times people have heard about God's doings and they offer thanksgiving. You see, church, thanksgiving is prayer. Praise is prayer. Worship, that two-way street, that communion that man has with God, that is prayer. Intercession is prayer. And many other 
Many others, they offer varying veins of prayer simply because they are thankful to their God. People pray because there are times God is the only one who can bring to their needs, what, to their lives, what's needed. Perhaps they need a physical miracle. If I don't get a physical miracle, I'm not going to make it. Perhaps they need a, a physical healing. Maybe they need a marital miracle. Maybe they want deliverance from a bad business deal. Perhaps they need a breakthrough for a child in their home. They again pray because only God can give to them what they so long for. The point is, when people pray, there are reasons that they pray. And just as there are reasons people pray, there are also reasons that people neglect prayer. An example, some believe God is, but, but not that he will reward them, and they feel this way because they just don't believe that they're good enough to receive a reward from the Lord. Maybe it's that they feel as though God's too big to lower himself to such menial tasks as, as answering my prayers. I could preach on an hour right there. I could preach an hour right there. Sometimes people don't pray because they have more faith in self than they do in the heavens. It's... It's not that they don't believe, it's instead that they feel more comfortable being in charge themselves. Their attitude is, I know that I can do this, so I'm just going to do it all by myself. There are times when people won't pray because they want it now. And, you know, sometimes God isn't a God that gives instant gratification. Sometimes people learn that they have to wait a while, so rather than wait a while, I'm just going to do it myself. One said, but I've heard God won't do for us what we can do for ourselves. My question is, how in the world do people align this mindset with seek ye first the kingdom in everything that you do? How do we align this if we are actually, according to the word, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Now, God does want us to put some works with our faith, but we must understand in all situations, God is the source. And without him, there would be absolutely no resource. So again, there are reasons that people pray. There are reasons that People neglect their prayer lives. When we look at Jesus' instructions concerning prayer, we find him saying to his apostles, you'll know this probably by heart, after this manner, therefore pray ye, this is Matthew 6, 9, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And yet we understand that the Lord's prayer is not all there is to prayer. The Lord's prayer is simply an outline that that we follow to cover pretty much all bases while we're praying. Look at the words, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is about us having recognition of all that God's name entails, all that, that is wrapped up in the name of the Lord. And, and really these things can be for us. They should be for us. God's name encompasses Him being our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You see, God supplies all of our need according to His riches in glory. And we praise Him for being our provider. God's name covers healing, Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. He is the Lord who heals 
He's also our miracle worker. He is also our deliverer in time of trouble. And we praise Him for being all of these things. God's name is inclusive of Him being our bedrock spiritual foundation. He cannot be shaken. So long as we are founded upon Him, we cannot be shaken. We cannot be moved. So we praise Him for being our sure foundation. God's name encompasses Him being an ever-present help in time of trouble. It encompasses Him being a friend that sticks closer than the nearest brother. So we praise Him for being an on-time God. We praise Him for being an ever-present God. We praise Him for all that He is. This prayer continues with, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Here we ask God to let, let Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done with all areas of my life. We simply turn those areas over to the Lord. Let your kingdom, Lord, your desire, your will come to Sister Sandy's life, to Casey's life, to Kelly's life, to Keith's life, to, to Alex's life, to Austin's life, to Ashland's life, to Aiden's life, to Adelaide's life, to Zari's life, to Henry's life, to all that, that are a part of my family, to all that are extended parts of my family. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your will be done, Lord, in each of their lives. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done on my job. Bless the works of my hands. Bless my mind while I'm on the job. Go before me. Come behind me. Be on the right hand. Be on the left. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done with my health, with finances, with friends, in every aspect of my life. Then comes, give us this day our Daily bread, mighty God, provide exactly what we need, exactly when we need it, God. Lord, we don't have to search for these things. They find us, Lord. We don't have to be out, Lord God, making things happen. We do what we're supposed to do. We do go to work. Amen, glory to God. We do do what we're supposed to do. We're supposed, whatever we're supposed to do, that's what we're supposed to be doing. But we lean on God and we trust Him to supply because He is our God. We are the sheep of His pasture. He is high and lifted up. His train fills the temple. We are His servants. Well, amen. Amen. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or those who have sinned against us. This is about seeking God's forgiveness because, friends, he is willing to forgive. Some people walk around with a load of guilt and shame and desperation just, just emanating from them. The Lord is just. He is faithful to forgive. Just repent. Get it over with. Get it under the blood. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. You've got to be careful here about this prayer because if we're going to pray... Forgive us our debts. If we forgive our debtors, we better be forgiven our debtors. Those that despitefully use us, we just need to put it under the blood. I've had people do untold things to me, and you know what I do? I put it under the blood. I shake it off. I don't need, I'm not carrying that baggage around with me. Oh, they did me wrong. So what? I didn't do them wrong. I want God to forgive me the way I forgive, not the way I hold on to grudges, not the way I hold on to anger, not the way I hold on to bitterness. I'm telling you, this Christian way is a different way. This Christian way is a different way, but when you live it, it works. So forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. God, don't allow me to fall into temptation. Lord, your word says that you always provide an, a way of escape in all entrapments. So don't let me fall. Don't let me get careless, God. Wake me up. Make me aware that I live in a wicked day 
we do live in a wicked day. And sometimes we bump into wicked people. Their, their minds are so far from God, they wouldn't know God if he knocked them in the head three or four times a day. And so we live in a wicked world. So Lord, don't allow us to put our foot into a trap of the enemy. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from temptation. And finally, we pray for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You, mighty God, are the kingdom. If I embrace you as I should, I embrace your kingdom. Your might, God, is a part of that kingdom, Lord. You are mighty in power. You are mighty in strength. You are glorious in power. You are glorious in strength. And Lord, Lord, I just want to give you, I just want to give to you the honor. I want to give to you the glory. Thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You can pray the Lord's prayer as written. But really the Lord in this prayer is saying go deep. Think about this outline. Think about what each segment means. And then pray that segment to its fullest. Sometimes I'll go and pray. And I never get out of. I never get out of the first segment of the Lord's prayer. Sometimes I don't even start in the beginning. I start in the middle. Sometimes I walk in. I've got, I've got things that are weighing me down. I start right there. Key, I'm going to give you some keys today that's going to help you. I promise you. So you can pray the Lord's Prayer is written, but really you need to go deep. You need to think. When you read the Scripture, there is deeper meaning Many times, there's much deeper truth. If, and it's, it's not that there's false things on the surface. There's just surface things on the surface. But if you think about it, if you pray about it, God begins unfolding. It's like one of those little picture books that you open up a page and it just poof, pops up. And, it's something, and you, you get into the Bible and it just, this week the Lord did that for me. That's why I'm preaching to you about this on today. Normally this is... Uh, this is this service Sunday morning services for people that first time in church and are looking for God but I just I felt like I needed to talk to you about a basic that if you don't have this you are missing out on so much in your relationship with God God is not just something we do God is something that we live God is an experience. He walks with us when we go into fiery situation. He goes with us when we go into situations that are beyond our ability to control. Man, if people would understand that it's about more than making a profession of your faith, it's about relationship with him. It's about knowing him and the fellowship of his sufferings. It's about knowing him. And understanding what he likes, what he dislikes. I mean, I talk about this all the time. How was it that Enoch became one of the two in the scriptures that was translated? In other words, he did not see death. How was it? It was because he pleased God. He walked with God. He talked with God. God spoke to him. They had a relationship. Well, hallelujah, I'm on my soapbox today. So we, we really need to look at the Lord's Prayer and see beneath the surface. You see, church, you cannot truly pray unless you have given yourself to prayer. You cannot truly pray unless you have been praying. Prayer, prayer prayed today is built upon tomorrow. Prayer prayed tomorrow is built upon the next day. Prayer prayed upon the next day is built upon the next day. It's like, it's like Legos. My grandkids love Legos. And they build crazy stuff with Legos. But we're, we're building something in these relationships that we have given ourselves to with God. We're building something that one of these days is going to take us out of this. Oh, 
Oh, did you feel that? Hallelujah. It's going to take us out of this world when God comes, Jesus comes back for his church. Yeah. So we need to know him. He's here. We don't see him, but he is here. He is here because we are here. So we cannot truly pray unless we have given ourselves to prayer. Prayer is not only about today. It is about a lifestyle. And what I'm about to say is so necessary to understand. Friends, prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer is a process and it's so necessary. I truly believe the single most important part of our day is our daily prayer. You see, prayer sets the stage for the entire rest of the day, being this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. One questions, but is it really all that important? If you neglect to pray over and over and over again, you cannot imagine how much you miss. If you give yourself to daily prayer, you know exactly what I'm talking about because in your prayer, you touch God. You know He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. If we are sad, if we are weak, if we are worn, if we are weary, the Scripture says He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Hallelujah. We know our God is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. We know him as our peace speaker. You see, every single one of us can reach out and touch him. That's if we're not panic button pushers only and instead are faithful prayers. Some people, the only time they think about God, oh my God, my world's falling apart. Panic button, panic button. God, I got to get to God now. Again, if you have not prayed, it's hard to pray because you have not lain the groundwork for that prayer to be effectual. One said, but I don't know how to pray. Okay, I get to ask this from time to time. If you don't know how to pray, you need to do all that you can learn you need to follow someone. You need to find out where pe when people pray. And you need to follow them to the prayer room. You need to ask them, will you mentor me concerning prayer? Ask them to take you under their wing until you learn how. And then you just do what you've seen. You do what you've heard. And then you start connecting the parts. Uh, you, if you followed me into prayer, you know, I'm usually at the prayer room um, 6 o'clock, sometimes 5.30. I'm usually there uh, three, sometimes four times a week. Okay, so I'm in there, and I go in, and first thing I do is I just sit down. There's soft music playing, and I'm just listening for the soft music. I'm just kind of relaxing. You know, you're driving to work, you got things on your mind. You're driving to prayer, you got things on your mind. And so I'm just sitting there, and I relax. And then I'll just begin talking to the Lord. Just, I love you, Jesus. I just want you to know that I care. And, and you see what people do. And, and, and you will know the moment. You watch somebody pray. You listen to somebody pray. And you will know the moment in that prayer when they finally connect. You will sense it. There will be a shift in the spirit. You will know that they've touched the Lord because the tenor of that prayer changes. It's not that they get louder. It's not that they get more fervent. There's just some little something that happens. There's a doorway that, that opens between this world and God's world. And there's this connection made. And there's this flowing that takes place. You know, we're flowing out to God. And all of a sudden, because that doorway is open, God is flowing back toward us. It's relationship. It's spiritual intimacy. It's a closeness that you have with God that most don't have because they're not committed to this 
this way of doing things that is, na that is totally natural for a true child of God that is living for God. When you live for God, you want to please God. When you live for God, you want to know God. When you live, when you just, when you're just doing religion, that's one thing. But when you're, when you're, when you've got relationship, that's the sauce that, that's the special sauce. <laughs> that they won't give out, they won't give out the recipe for. Hallelujah. If I had that special sauce, I could make a million dollars. Yes. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. But you got to learn to pray. You go to school to learn to do arithmetic, to do English, to do some crazy stuff. Stuff that you'll never use after you get out. Some of that stuff you'll never use once you get out. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. You develop a prayer life. You will use that till the day you see the Lord face to face. And it will be my God. Goodness, it'll be the joy of your life. Man, man, man. Man, man, man. Hallelujah. 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 So you follow somebody to prayer, pray. I, I have followed more people to the prayer room when I was younger. I have followed more people to the prayer room to learning how to pray. I never took courses on how to pray. I always went and watched people who knew how to pray. Pray, And I just developed a prayer life. One said, Brother Sarton, I don't have time to pray. The truth is, when you set your prayer life in its proper place, what you'll find is you have more time than the non-prayer. Does not compute. Does not compute. We got 24 hours in a day, Brother Sarton. How can we have more time? If we give ourselves to prayer. It's the law of the tithe and the offerings. Given it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. It's that, that's part of the law. It's, it's part of when you give yourself to God. The peripheral stuff begins to work itself out. The things that you used to do inefficiently. You suddenly begin to do efficiently. Because God is helping you work smarter. He's helping you do things in a more organized manner. I'm telling you, when you give yourself to prayer, it's amazing the other things that just start shaking out. And you start saying, man, it's like I got everybody else has got 24 hours in a day. I got 32 hours in a day. Amen. I know. I know the world will not understand that, but it is so true. Prayer works. If you will just do it. Let's go back to our text. James 5.13. Friends, I have been preaching. I forgot how long I've been preaching. It's been forever. <laughs> Let's go back to James 5.13. And God showed me something here that I'd never seen before. I've preached from this passage so many times. And God opened something up to me. That, that's probably why I wanted to preach this message more than anything else, because it got me so excited. James 5, 13, is any among you afflicted? In other words, are there any suffering hardship, facing trouble? If you are, the word continues with, let him pray. Let him seek God's favor. Then he said, is any merry? Let him sing psalms. In other words, sing songs of praise. Sing worship songs. Just give glory if you're happy. Verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him call for the preachers. If you ever get sick and you want me to come, you pick up the phone and you call me and I will be there. But don't expect me to know that you're sick if you haven't called me. God will sometimes tell me to call people. I called several people this week just out of the blue. God just called Sister Kathy this week, just on my mind, so I called her. How you doing? And uh, I just, I do that from time to time. But God doesn't call me and say, this one broke a toe today. This one broke an arm today. God doesn't do that. I'm just not, I guess I'm not that close enough to it. But what I'm saying to you is, the scripture gives a, a cure for this. It says, if you're sick, call for the elders of the church. Call for the preachers in the church. 
and let them pray over you, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Jesus. When asked, but why do we call the preacher? First, it's to be obedient to God's word. Secondly, we exhibit faith in the promises of God to heal, to bring miracles when we call for the preacher. We're saying we believe so, we believe and so our actions show our belief. Our actions reveal our belief. Okay? So we do it to be obediently. Secondly, because we're showing faith in the promises of God to heal, to bring miracles, we call as an act of faith. We know anointing oil is a type of the Holy Ghost. It's kind of like a prayer cloth. You think about prayer cloths. Every now and then, uh, God will just move me to give out prayer cloths, and I'll anoint a bunch of prayer cloths, and I'll say to the church, I got prayer cloths, and I always run out of prayer cloths. Everybody wants a prayer cloth. But it's a contact of faith. It's something that's been prayed over, that's been anointed with oil. It's a contact of faith. And, and so when we, when we anoint with oil, it's a contact of faith. The oil is a physical type of the Spirit of God. It's a physical type of the Holy Ghost. So we anoint with oil. It's a contact of faith. And again, it's a type of the Holy Ghost. And so, man, when we anoint with oil, we pray the prayer of faith. Something magnificent is about to occur. All right, verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the six, and the Lord shall raise him up. If he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And then we find a very interesting directive. James tells us in verse 16, listen to this now, confess your faults one to another, pray for one another, that ye may be healed. Faults here refers to offenses. If we've offended, if we've been offended, we're to get it right between self and brother or sister. If we've done hurt, we're supposed to ask forgiveness. Then we're to get to praying for one another so the offense can be healed. Did you get that? We wonder sometimes, you know, we sometimes forget that and we go straight on. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail as much. Well, let's wait a, wait a minute. Let's back up a little bit. Because you've got some fence mending to do. Before you ever get to the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much. Sometimes people sit in a congregation and this happened a month ago. This happened three years ago. And this one sits on this side of the congregation. And the other one sits on that side of the congregation. I can't bear to see them. I'm so angry with them. You know what this scripture is saying? You'll never be healed. Until you first heal the relationship. I'm not saying you got to be best buddies with anybody. But you got to get the meanness out of you. you got to get the, you got to get the anger out of you. Anger is self-destructive. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, you forgive them for you? Because you ain't carrying that load around on your back. I ain't carrying, I, look, I got too much to carry. I'm 200, I'm, I'm, I'm pounds. And I got too much to carry. I don't need to be carrying no more. All right. You don't need to be carrying a bunch of junk. If you've hurt somebody's feelings, just get it over with. It's so easy to say I'm sorry. Now, if they won't accept it, that's on them. They're the ones that's got to come and say, I'm sorry for not accepting. You want to be healed? This is how you get healed. You say, well, I hadn't seen a miracle in the last year. What you got against somebody? What you got in your heart against somebody? Just saying, I, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I got to get things right between my brothers and my sisters. So offenses won't hinder my prayers. And God can flow freely. And we find the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Get this church. For our prayers to be effectual, they must be fervently prayed also. They must be prayed from a position of righteousness. But they must be prayed fervently. One said, but I've prayed for years and nothing. And so, so you know, you've got to, you've got, you know, it may be something that you forgot about so long ago. Just go ahead and get to digging. 
You know, it's kind of like those, uh, what do they call those weeds that get in the flower beds, Brother Steve, that you hate so much? Torpedo, torpedo grass. Torpe I found some torpedo grass in one of my flower beds yesterday. I was so upset. I said, Brother Steve would be so upset too. <laughs> torpedo grass. You know, it's like torpedo grass, man. That torpedo grass, it just runs forever. You start here and you say, my goodness, is it going to end up in China, the other end of this thing? It just goes and goes and goes and goes. And so if we want our prayers to be answered, we've got to make sure we're offering them from a standpoint of righteousness, and then we've got to make sure that we pray fervently. In other words, we've got to get, we've got to get emotionally in contact with what we're praying about. If it doesn't move you, I'll tell you what, if I'm preaching, this is a law of preaching. If you don't feel it, they're not going to feel it. If I don't feel it, you're not going to feel it. If I even I don't feel what I'm preaching, you're going to be sitting there saying, my God, I wish this guy would just shut up and let us get out of here and go home. Well, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. It matters how we pray. Righteousness, fervently, connected, interconnected, and then it begins to work. Then it goes on, verse 17. Elias, this speaking about the prophet Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. You know, Elijah could be ornery. You read about Elijah, he could be an ornery guy. He really could. I mean, I mean he's like he's trying to drive Elisha from him. Just get away from me, man. I got things to do. I'm not, I got, the Lord's told me I got to see you when he comes down for you. And I, so I'm not going anywhere. Just stay, get away from, you know, he was really kind of like that. He liked to be all by himself all of the time. And, um, and so it says here, he was a man subject to like passions as we are. And so he was human, you know, and yet he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And the scripture said it rained not on the face of the earth three years and six months. About a week ago, I was wishing I had that ability. Lord, I wish I could stop the rain. <laughs> but I prayed and it didn't work. God, God, I must not. I don't know what it was. I guess I'm too sweet. I don't know. Hallelujah. But anyway, he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for three years, six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave forth rain. The earth brought forth her fruit. I don't think most understand just how powerful get, getting connected to God really is is. Elijah prayed earnestly. He prayed hard. He prayed emotionally. He prayed physically. And because he did, it actually ceased reigning in the kingdom three and a half years. He prays again, and here it goes. Man, the water's falling. One said, Brother Sartre, that was the prophet Elijah. I'm just little old me. I'm telling you, God is no respecter of persons. God does not esteem one fervent prayer above another fervent prayer. And if you will pray the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and woman, God will honor your prayer. Friends, again I say you got to make sure your hearts are right. If you will make sure you're not harboring bad feelings, bitter feelings mean spirits, bad attitudes. If you're not holding on to anger spirits, and then you begin praying, God, I need you to move. Then I'm telling you, miracles will begin to occur. He will begin to work healings in your life. He will begin to deliver you from whatever you're battling. But we simply must get a hold of clean hearts and then simply pray effectual, fervent prayer. We can't pray today and at the end of the day, if what we've prayed for has not come up well, God, you failed me. I give up. We cannot grow weary in well-doing. We can't throw in the towel simply because our attitude is God must not be hearing. Really, church, the problem is we cannot waver because it will sidetrack us from the desired end as quickly as the sin. James in 1-2 my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy when trouble finds you. Why? Verse 3 tells us, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh.
Patience. Verse 4, but let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What he's saying is allow your patience to finish what it began. The reason being, if you don't allow your patience to finish, you will frustrate and quit before you reach the finish line. Verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. He upbraideth not, it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable, not in some of his ways, but in all of his ways. Again, we begin in faith. We run in patience. We finish, and then wisdom is the end result. That's beautiful to me. I'm preaching we must be single-minded. We can't be faith-filled one day and doubt-filled the next. Again, church, without the finish, we cannot receive the wisdom in seeing our prayers realized. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Understand this awesome, incredible, life-changing truth. Prayer without question. It works. It works. It works. It works. That's if we'll pray with the proper spirit. And that's if we will finish. Okay, now let me say this. I don't want you to quit before I quit. How y'all doing out there? How y'all doing out there? About 10 more minutes, and I can get done, okay? So hang with me. All right? I got a few more good things to say. Ah. Paul in Hebrews 10.35, listen to this. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. What is the first thing we lose when we've been praying and it doesn't seem like nothing's happening? Cast not, therefore, away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. If you won't cast away your confidence, reward is on its way. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise and then he goes on, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Come on, church, finish what you started. Amen. Brother Sergeant, I want my kids saved. I got one word, finish. I want my soul, I want many souls to be one to the kingdom of God. Through the life that I live for you, Lord, finish. I want to see the hand of God work mighty miracles. Finish. Don't stop at the first, second, third, tenth off-ramp in your journey. Instead, finish. God, I'm your child on this day. I'm coming, Lord, and I'm asking you to move. Powerfully in my world. I believe in Lord even now you're beginning to move. I trust you God. You're in charge of my life. You knew before I had need that a need was coming. You are able Lord. I believe you're willing God. So I'm asking you to come through for me. Because I'm going to be here until. I'm going to finish mighty God. You simply talk to God like you talk to others. The one difference being you realize that your God has all power, all wisdom, all knowledge, and can do with the mere wave of his hand what all doctors, all counselors, what all the wisest of the wise could not do in a lifetime. I'm preaching prayer works, prayer works, prayer works. The story goes that in one of the more remote regions of Africa, I've been into some of those regions, I know what I'm talking about here. The first converts to Christianity were extremely diligent about their prayer lives. In fact, every believer had their own little special place outside the village where they daily went to pray in solitude. Villagers reached these so-called prayer rooms by using their own private footpaths through the brush. 
However, when grass began to grow over one of the footpaths, it was evident that the person to whom the path belonged was not praying as they ought to. Because these brand new Christians were concerned for each other's spiritual welfare, a custom sprang up amongst them. Whenever anyone noticed an overgrown prayer path, he or she would go to the person and lovingly warn them, friend, there's grass on your path. The question this morning is this. Is there grass on your path? If there is, it's time to get back to walking your path. To making your way to that place that you used to visit so faithfully. He said, Brother Sergeant, you don't understand. I desperately need God to work faithfully in my life at this time. Friends, the way to see this happen again Get your heart right. Offer effectual, fervent prayer. If you will pray this kind of prayer, God cannot but help in time of trouble. If he's aware of a little sparrow that falls, when you sigh, the Lord knows. You just sigh. Ha! Man, when you breathe funny I'm telling you God is aware he is so interconnected to every single one of us he knows every time you get the feeling desperate and lonely and hurt and angry and frustrated and he just says take my yoke upon you my yoke is easy my burden is light he will work for you If you will just pray. Let's stand. There have been times too numerous in my life to number when our family had genuine need for a meaningful move of God. Six months after Sister Sandy and I were married, appendix burst. And they didn't think she was going to make it. We prayed. I mean, diligent prayer. God raised her up. Uh, I remember looking through the hospital glass and with my dad standing outside, and I could see his face. And I knew that this had to be a God thing. And God raised me up. Prayers were made for our children. God came through. Prayers were made so many times for this church family. And again, God came through. God just always seemed to come through. Sometimes the answer wasn't what we expected, but God always answered those prayers. You see, friends, prayer works. It's if we make up our minds to pray the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. You came to church today, and I guarantee you there's something going on in your life that you needed God to work on. You may have not had a conscious thought, well, I'm going to church today to get this fixed. But I guarantee every single person in here has got something that you either feel like must be done, something's got to happen, or it sure would be nice if this would happen. So what do you need God to do today? Friends, if you will listen to what I'm preaching today, it will change your life forever. What do you need God to do today? I always tell people this, and it's the hardest one to take. You're sitting back in the pew, and you're you're saying, okay, what are they going to try to get me to do now? Well, um, I always tell people that movement is an act of faith. If you take a step, if if you just take one step 
out of the pew and just take a step toward God, that's an act of faith. You take two steps, that's a little more faith. Take three steps. I promise you this, ain't nobody going to try to get you to do anything you don't want to do today. Ain't nobody going to try to get you to go anywhere you don't want to go. Ain't nobody going to try to get you to say anything you don't want to say. But if you got a need in your life, if you will take a step toward God, I'm telling you, God will begin the process today of bringing either healing, might be a miracle, could happen instantaneously. But if you have a need in your life, and you'll take a step toward Him today, God will meet you. Where's my altar workers? You come in. Now, you know, we want to do this just to make you feel comfortable because there's so much news out there. I get so sick of the news. I'm about ready to. I'm about ready to start preaching against news. But uh, but I, I want my people to put your masks on. I want you to put wash your hands, do all of that stuff. So if you need, if you just need something from the Lord, doesn't have to be anything big, but. Maybe I'm having problems in this area, worries in this area. I need God to do this. Just take a step. Just take a little step toward God this morning. Just take a little step toward God this morning. Take a step of faith. Come on. Come on. Don't wait. Don't wait. Take a little step toward God. That's it. That's it. Nothing to be afraid of. Somebody's just going to pray the prayer of faith with you. Come on. You need God to just move today for you. Just God to move, just work a miracle for you, a healing for you, a deliverance for you. Just come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You need God to open a door for you that's been closed to this point.